Hi, it's Dwyer. It's May the 30th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. NBA Finals. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I think it's the Warriors to lose, right? I think we're going to find out a lot in Game 1 in the third quarter, right? I'm expecting Canada to show up full force. It's their first time in an NBA Finals. I think the fans are going to be out. I think the players are going to be amped. I think they are going to be ready, right? The problem is, even with Kevin Durant out for Game 1, I just don't think Toronto has the talent to compete with the Golden State Warriors, right? Now, I'll agree. There are storm clouds out there. Let me also, full disclosure, say I'm on both sides of the aisle here. I have futures on both teams. I'm surprised, shocked, in fact, that the Warriors have been as dominant as they have since Kevin Durant's injury. I happened to be in Vegas when Kevin Durant got injured. I thought immediately that Durant was more injured than the Warriors were letting on, that he was going to miss substantial playing time. I thought the NBA Finals, as I said in an earlier video, was that Golden State Houston series. I thought Houston was going to do better after the Durant injury. I don't know what happened to Houston in the fourth quarter of games after that injury. Right? Then I thought C.J. McCollum and Lillard were going to at least push the issue. In the Western Conference Finals, um, without Durant ever appearing in that series, the Warriors ran the table. Right? It seems that the league was accustomed to the Warriors playing at a certain pace with Durant doing some ISOs. And what they're up against is really the old Warriors. Right? Bogut is back. Uh, the Splash Brothers are in full effect. Clay Thompson wasn't quite Clay Thompson with Durant in the lineup. Now he's back. Right? Just understand that this team right now a team that swept the Western Conference Finals, that beat Houston, a team I believe was better than Toronto. Right? Understand, James Harden is going to finish no lower than second in the MVP voting. As much as I like Leonard, I don't believe he's as good as James Harden. I think James Harden creates all kinds of problems for you. Right? I look at some of the Toronto players, they're overachievers, right? Siakam, um, you know, just look at his history. He's had some non-All-Star seasons, right? Both in college and in the pros. Look at Kyle Lowry, he's not even healthy. He said in interviews that he can't feel his thumb. You look at some of the other players and they're standing around waiting for Kawhi to take the shots, right? There's no Chris Paul on the Toronto Raptors. I'll concede Lowry's an excellent player when he's fully healthy. But let's just say, you know, I don't see the other gun either, the Eric Gordon, the guy who's not the MVP candidate who can still kill you from three and get more than 20 a night on a regular basis, right, on the Toronto Raptors. So I believe Golden State asserts themselves in the third quarter here. I would not be surprised if Golden State snatches home court advantage in game one. If they do, folks, it's a wrap. I'll concede. If Golden State goes back home down 0-2, then that's a problem. 
right? I'll concede that. I'm expecting Golden State by the time they get back to the Bay Area after game two to have taken back home court advantage. Let's just talk about the storm clouds out there. There's uncertainty with the Warriors, isn't there? Because KD is out and you're bringing back DeMarcus Cousins, who's been out. Basketball's a chemistry sport. It's going to take the team a little bit to figure out how to play with Cousins. Right? Also, there's the international factor. Right? Golden State plays on the West Coast. Toronto's on the East Coast in a different country. Right? Golden State has had to travel across several time zones to get to game one. But Golden State is rested, aren't they? Let me just say too, that rest was needed. Right? Given that DeMarcus Cousins banged up, KD banged up, uh, Curry playing out of his mind, the team, the bench isn't as deep as it once was, starters with significant minutes, right? Golden State needed the rest. Another question is whether Golden State had too much rest. They've been off for a while now. They've been off the maximum period of time after a sweep of the Western Conference Finals. Right? But just understand, if Golden State leaves Game 1 with home court, it's a done deal. Right? Let me also say this too. Against Giannis, Toronto was able to stack the lane, right? That's how they were successful defensively. They put Leonard on Giannis and they stacked the lane. That's exactly the wrong kind of defense against the Golden State Warriors, right? Understand, this team is among the all-time greats, right? The best teams I've seen. Right, since I've been watching ball. The 77 Trailblazers with Bill Walton. Let's remember, they win the NBA championship, right? Beat Julius Irving and the Philadelphia 76ers. Then the next year, they're 50 and 10 before Walton's foot falls apart and the team's never the same. Right? The 454, 83 Sixers. Right? Remember that team. Dr. J is back, only this time he's with Moses. And Lord knows that team was stacked. Both Cheeks, Andrew Tony, um, all the way down the line. Showtime. Magic. First pick in the draft. Michael Thompson. First pick in the draft. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. First pick in the draft. James Worthy. First pick in the draft. You had four guys on one team who were the first picks in the draft. And you had scoring champs like Bob McAdoo coming off the bench. That team was absurd, right? Boston, Bird McHale Ma uh, Parrish, right? Walton, Ainge, DJ, Dennis Johnson. That's a dominant team. The bad boys, different era, right? Guys who would hand check you to death. <clears throat> but um, Isaiah, Joe Dumars in the same backcourt, uh, Bill Lambert, Rick Mahorn, James Edwards, uh, Mark Aguirre, Adrian Dantley, that team was loaded. Then I think, right, you're talking about the gold standard, the dynamic duo. I've never in my life seen two teammates play better together. Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. Right? Understand how dominant the Bulls were during the era. Jordan, Pippen, six rings, never forced to a game seven in an NBA Finals. Right? No game sevens. I'd say next you have the uh, two guys who didn't like each other, Shaq and Kobe, and the three-peat Lakers. 
Um, I believe this team, the Warriors, really are on the verge of surpassing some of those teams. Right? This run without Durant is noteworthy. Right? Not losing a game since he got injured. Let me also say, too, understand, even without him, you saw in the game in against Houston, this playoff series, uh, season, where Curry has no points at halftime, ends up with a boatload, more than 30 in the second half of the game. Right? Curry and Clay Thompson, and I'm telling you, this Warrior run would have been interrupted by Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook had Klay Thompson not had one of the best shooting games I've seen in my life in a must-win playoff game a couple years ago. Golden State against OKC, right? When those two guys are hot, they can carry a team better than anyone else in this series and that includes Kawhi Leonard. Right? When those two guys get hot, it's something to see. Right? Clay Thompson, when he's totally on fire, doesn't even have to dribble the ball. Right? There are games where the guys, I know there's a game where Clay Thompson has over 50 points and they sit him for the fourth quarter. Right? These guys are shooters, shooters. Understand Curry in either three of the last four years or four of the last five years has had seasons where he's hit 40% from three, 50% from two, and 90% from the free throw line. Right? 90. Right? So pay close attention to this Warrior team. Understand, too. Leonard is dangerous, no question about it. But Draymond Green is a former Defensive Player of the Year. Understand everyone in the Bay Area, and I mean everyone in the Bay Area, knows it's a farce, an absolute farce, that Klay Thompson hasn't been on more all-defensive teams. Right? You knew Portland was in trouble. Game one, after C.J. McCollum has his way in game seven against a two-seed, Denver in Denver. You knew Portland was in trouble the minute you saw Clay Thompson on C.J. McCollum. The minute you saw Clay Thompson on Lillard, you understood you were dealing with a great defender who had size. Right, Clay Thompson would have fit in, quite frankly, with Jordan and Pippen on that bull team. Right, so, as I've said, if Golden State wins game one, I know the odds are terrible. Go ahead and put a series uh, victory, uh, mid-series, on Golden State to win it all. Because Toronto won't be coming. I don't even care if Toronto wins game two. If Golden State gets home court advantage. Good luck making it past game six in the series. Right? We'll revisit this as the series goes along, but understand, if Golden State wins either game one or game two, it's over. You're dealing with an all-time team. Understand, too, you get Cousins back. Right? Right? And you're going to see more of Andrew Bogut this series. And that could be a game changer. You mean to tell me that the Warriors who, are, who already are superior in terms of experience and accuracy from the outside, you mean to tell me the Warriors are actually going to have Serious beef underneath the basket. Serious big man. Understand who Bogut is. He was picked first in the draft when he came out. Understand Bogut still plays in Australia. Excellent 
defensive player. Marc Gasol and Serge Ibaka are going to have their hands full. Right? Pay close attention to Boogie. I'll agree. If Boogie re-injures himself. Right? If Curry is ice cold. As he was toward the end of the one finals they lost in the last four years. Right? To Cleveland, if you recall that. By the way, they were up 3-1 in that finals. Right? Understand, a lot has to go wrong for the Warrior train to get derailed. I like the Warriors in the series. I'm expecting them. My prediction is based on my strong belief that the Warriors win either Game 1 or Game 2 and snatch home court advantage. If they don't, then we're going to have to revisit this. <clears throat> right? My advice to gamblers here is if the Warriors snatch home court, put a series bet on the Warriors. It's a done deal. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know there's Raptor Nation out there. This forum is interactive. We have a comment section. Feel free to leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me just say, in terms of matchups, I thought the Milwaukee Bucks would have given the Golden State Warriors a much tougher matchup than I expect Toronto to give them. Right? As I said, Toronto packed the lane against Giannis. Right? You pack the lane against Golden State, you lose by 30. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.